this time I'm looking at a 7 channel power amp. This is a Nakamichi AVP1. And this is a big amplifier. <laughs> There's not much room left on the bench. <laughs> now this is a bit of an audio file unit I think. It's heavy. To show this as a serious piece of kit, the front panel is very plain. There's just a power switch. It's got a fairly large grill on the top to let all the heat out of these seven channels. And the back end is where all the business is, although it's quite simply laid out. Each channel will accept either an unbalanced or balanced input. You just select with this little switch. Well, the only tells me that one of the channels is down. I can't remember which one, but to be fair, seven channels, one down. There's still four spares. It's useful to point out that all these switches are set to unbalanced. So I know which input to check. Let's see how much inrush there is on this. Well that guy the bulb's a bit of grief. Well I don't see too much trouble there. I'm not sure what this is at the bottom. Is that because there's two channels? Yeah that's it. Yeah there's nothing wrong with these. So I can use the input selectors to disable the outputs. This is actually quite handy. And these are fine as well. Now channels 5 and 6. Yeah, these two are also good. Channel 7. No output on channel 1. Mm. I'm just going to check these with a balanced input because you never know. I've been caught out before. One of the beauties of this signal generator is it's got two channels and they float. So you have a truly balanced signal. I don't think it liked that, I heard it trip when I unplugged the other one. Reset, come on. Oh look at that, I don't think there's much up with this channel. Something on the input side. Well, I don't think it's a loose wire. Hmm. At least now I know what I'm looking for. I don't think it's going to be too much wrong with this, but I think it's going to be a real pain to get at it. Well, there's quite a lot of metal in this, and they're even branded inside the chassis. They know you'll be looking. This is definitely aimed at the audio file. Well, some little nose around. We've got a little transformer here. I think that's just for standby power. It's quite big, just for standby. And there's a big, heavy toroidal transformer in there. There's no switch mode stuff in this. And there's seven output channels all lined up in a row. Very obedient looking. I can show you a bit of it through this gap. It's all through whole components, and I'm surprised that that had been so young. Well, I have to say, it all looks quite standard in here, which is nice for repairs. Although there's no schematics online, so we're on our own here. Well, each channel's on plug connectors, which is handy. We've got power at the bottom. And we can see we've got pass-through cables for the commands. I think this is just sort of mute and enable and just general status of the amp. And the inputs are all switched on this separate board running along the back. In fact, there's three of them, one for each row of sockets. And on the other side, there's no less than six 15,000 microphone caps. There's plenty of storage on these power supply rails. Well, I'll just put it on its side, so I'm going to take the back cover off. And look how many screws there are to take these out. Blimey. There's even an extra foot in the middle. It knows it's overweight. We've got some movement, but I think I need to unplug these cables to get better access. Presumably the little ribbon cable is the balanced input and the other cable is the single-ended one. They're all in one plug anyway, so easy to undo. Well, just checking the obvious things first, I don't see anything actually wrong with this plug. But there's a fair bit going on here. There's plugs going all over the place. So I'm going to see if I can measure the continuity from the socket onto this cable. Well, there we have it. It's good. Although, look at this. My eye is drawn to this. This connector's sort of in the air. It's not sat down properly. 
Could that be a problem? Oh, it's a bit borderline. Well, it's very loose. Well, there's not a lot of pins sticking up through there. <laughs> that could be it, you know. Well, it's been a while since I've had an easy one. <laughs> this amp makes use of star grounding quite seriously. Individual wires for every ground point going all the way back to the capacitors. And it's the same for the speaker negative terminals. We saw that oscillation going on between channels 6 and 7 when they were joined together. I wonder if it's because these ground cables are so long. Could be a bit of capacitive coupling. They've even bundled up the slack over here, look at that. <laughs> well, just put the back panel back on. When these plugs in up here, pain. <laughs> There's one. Let's test it out now. That's working on both inputs. Better check the other channels before I put the lid on. Check I haven't disturbed any other connections. This one's good. That one's good. Just adjust it. Give you a nice look. <laughs> and this switch is fine too. Yeah. Perfect. Well that's a full set, all working great. I just need to put the covers back in. Well that's one of the easiest repairs I've had in for a long time. If I'd have known it was going to be that simple, <laughs> I wouldn't have filmed it. Catch you next time.